Well, hello. So we'll give folks a couple minutes to join in. But thank you, everyone, for being willing to join us here on a Monday evening. So you know, it takes a couple minutes as this goes live. So if you're just now joining us, my name's Kate, this is Kristen, and you've probably seen that we've got a big announcement coming tonight, so we want to give everybody a couple minutes to get joined in, don't want anybody to miss it, so thank you. Um, if you're tuning in, tell us who you are and where you're joining from. Feel free to drop that in the comment section there. Got a couple people telling us their one friend is looking for it. Let's see. So yeah, please drop in the comments. Tell us, hey Shelly, you found it. Welcome. So I know you're joining us from Carter County. So who else is here with us with us this evening? Oh, and Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Julie. It's good to see you. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Hey, Denise. Hey, Courtney. Super excited to have you all here with us this evening. Hi, Miranda. Miranda, where are you joining us from? Oh, hey, hey LaToya. Hi, Becky. Hi, Wendy. Give everybody a couple minutes to get get on here now because we've got some big news we want to share with everybody. And we're actually streaming on Facebook and we're streaming on Twitter. Um, oh, hi, Miranda. So, yeah, you're, you're joining for Kingsport. So thank you for being here. Wendy, I know you're down there in Hamilton County. Hey, Erica. Erica, where are you joining from? We're super excited to have everybody here this evening. Happy Pride. Definitely happy pride. But speaking of, I have a message for that. Let's see here. There we go. It's fun what technology can do. Happy Pride Month. So, is everybody, did everybody wear their rainbow gear today? Celebrate Pride? Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Beth. So, yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. Um, so thank you, everybody. Oh, Elizabeth, then. Awesome. Thank you for being with us. We've got all three counties represented. Facebook and Twitter. Yes, StreamYard got fancy on me. And so um, and I guess there's a 24 hour waiting period to stream on to YouTube. But when that passes, it'll stream on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for all future streams. So, yes. Um, so yeah, so welcome. I know that we've been teasing you all, like we've been teasing you all with a big announcement for the past, what, two weeks? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, um, so don't worry, we'll only wait, make you wait a couple more minutes. Um, but I know everybody's on the edge of, ed edge of your seat trying to figure out what's going on. Um, oh, great. Thank you for joining in from Virginia. Daryl from, Green from Greenville, yes. Daryl's the, the chair out in um, Greene County. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Leanne. So, yeah, thank you. Um, so, yes, happy Pride if you're just now joining us. And um, so you ready to tell them? Tell the big news? Yeah. All right. Well, um, well, first of all, no, we didn't elope. That's been kind of like the big suspicion. <laughs> um, but for those that... Um, that haven't um that don't know yet we got engaged in uh on april 8th mm -hmm. this past this past april 8th and we've been planning an october 2023 wedding and so we're very very excited um about that and then roe v wade happened and obviously you know as uh, progressive folks that were super i mean just Nobody's pregnant, <laughs> um, but we're, you know, we were nervous uh, on top of that, of what would come down the pike a in a year and a half, because all that got signaled, even the op-ed that got published right after Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, 
And so we, as like the day the, um, the announcement came out, the leaked opinion came out, we started talking about what does it mean about, yes, we're sure nobody's pregnant, Cindy. <laughs> um, we got to talking about what does it mean to us um, and why is this important? And so we, uh, no, we didn't elope, um, but we decided that we, that a year and a half was too long to wait to make it legal. And that it was too much to risk in a year and a half for the plan that we wanted. We're still going to do the plan that we wanted, but our big announcement is we're going to make it legal this month. And so we very intentionally chose Pride Month um, to make it legal. So um, we're excited to share that on June 18th, we are going to have a super small ceremony in the backyard. I'm pointing because for those that can't see through the wall, there is a backyard back here. <laughs> And um, we're going to get married. And um, and so we're still going to, like I said, still going to do the ceremony we wanted. But the reason that this is important and um, we wanted to share this story because what's happening politically is it's affecting all of us. Um, that there's stuff happening that lots of gay couples are looking at what's happening and going, is this, could this be my marriage? Could this, could I not be able to get married? What, you know, what does this mean? What can we do to protect ourselves? Um, and, and we had that conversation. And so, uh, and it's, and there's an, there's an element of that's incredibly sad that we don't get along. We don't get the engagement period that we wanted. Um, don't get me wrong. We're very excited to be married. <laughs> um, <laughs> And in all of that, so um, celebrating the congratulations, but what the part of the story that we thought was important to share had everything to do with the fact that um, that gay couple, that same sex couples are scared right now. And so we want to know that um, that our relationships that are that can be recognized under the law, same as everybody else's. And and it's under attack. The right to privacy that that lives in all of this is under attack. We don't have federal legislation that protects it. We have a court case that's very can be very easily overturned the same way Roe v. Wade was. And um, and then to add to that, um, yep, you're right, Miranda. We shouldn't have to make that decision. And um, Chase, you're right. No couple should be scared of the legality of their love. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know that, Julie. I didn't know you all got married right before um, Trump. That, and I knew a couple couples that did that too. Um, you know, we, what was it? You know, what do I want to say? So Rusty Crow and the Tennessee GOP, they pushed, they tried to push through legislation this past year that would define marriage between a man and a woman. Um, basically, essentially like having a trigger bill that once it was overturned, that the state wouldn't recognize marriages. And this is what's happening actively right now. There's already laws in the books that allows especially faith-based adoption agencies to discriminate against um, couples that don't identify with their faith. Their intention was to um, restrict um, same-sex couples from adopting. Um, but there's now a court case out of Greene County where there's a couple that tried to adopt and because the couple didn't, and a, a straight couple did not share their same religious beliefs, um, they were denied an adoption. And so, um, and yeah, LaToya, you're right. Um, you and Becky with an interracial marriage, like that's very, also very much at risk. Um, so the Loving v. Virginia case, that could be overturned. Um, so, um, so in Tennessee, we had that, that case to trying to find marriage. And in that, they didn't seem to care that it would have legalized uh, child marriage. Um, luckily, it's um, not it, that one didn't pass, but it's also not going to be the only time that they try. And clearly, they're still trying seven years after the Supreme Court decision. Um, I mean, look at what happened with Roe v. Wade and all the, the 50 plus years that that was legal and they still kept trying and they had a trigger bill in place. So all our right to privacy, our right to have um, our own lives, to li live and let live, to love um, as you know, as who we are, that um, that's under attack. And we, you know, this isn't just happening to somebody out there. Obviously, there's there's people commenting here that this is affected, um, that this is happening in our community. This is happening in every community. 
um, this just so happens to be happening to us, to me, as somebody who is at the same time running for office. And um, so it's, it's, it felt very real to me to share this story. And so many of you, I see so many of you that I know on here, have known me that known that I, regardless of whether I was running for office or not, I would have told this story. Um, and I'm pretty fairly un unspoken. Yeah, you're right, Daryl. The Tennessee Constitution does define marriages between one man and one woman. Um, our Constitution needs a lot of updating. So, by the way, if you're voting, vote to remove slavery from our Constitution this November, because right now that's legalized in our Constitution. Um, and please vote um, to uh, against the right to work laws, because, you know, we've got to protect basically right to work means the right to work with no rights, the right to work for low, lower wages, the right to work in dangerous conditions, the right to be fired without cause or, or anything. So, you know, we've got to be stay on top of what's happening, uh, these ballot initiatives. And um, so, yeah, we wanted to, get, you know, come on here and tell this story and why this matters. Um, you know, just to kind of bring it up just a little bit. Do you want to tell our engagement story? You tell it so much better, dear. <laughs> I'm putting her on the spot. Better. <laughs> like just what happened? Yeah, tell her engagement story. Um, okay, so oh my god, I'm terrible at this. Uh <laughs> so basically we proposed to each other. Um definitely want to let Kate fill in <laughs> after this, but um, we had our first date at um, Matoga Brewing on the rooftop, and then um, 364 days later, um, <clears throat> we were back um, at Watauga Brewing and getting ready to propose to one another. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, same time as a, another political event, and so it was a, you know, fun weekend that started there. Please fill in for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so um, what I'll add is that, um, so last fall I started planning to, by the way, I make no promises that cats won't make an appearance here. Um, there are cats climbing all through here because they get, as, you know, as everybody has learned that um, it, um, what am I say? that um, Zoom is a place to have the animal menagerie to come and visit. Um, but yeah, just to answer Daryl's question, I put it up there. I will debate Rusty Crow anytime, any place. Um, I will always show up to a forum because I think that voters should absolutely um, have access to all the candidates. Um, Amber, the announcement is that we're getting married on June 18th. Uh, we decided that um, a lot could happen in a year and a half. We got nervous of what everything got signaled around the right to privacy and what could happen. And so we um, decided intentionally to get married during Pride Month. Um, so the um, so, yeah, the fall of 2021, I started planning to um, to propose um, on April 9th on our one year anniversary and had started plotting out that it was gonna be on the rooftop of Watauga Brewing, hadn't told her a thing. Um, and so this is like five, six months out. And so I, um, well, I'm at a county party fundraising committee meeting because that's, I'm at a county party meeting in some form or fashion for the Washington County Democratic Party. And our fundraising chair announces that, oh, the only dates available um, for the upcoming fundraising dinner is April is Saturday, April 9th. And I'm pretty sure the entire room watched me go, oh, no. <laughs> and they're looking at me very confused. And so I um, then tell the entire committee what's going on. So the committee knew before Kristen did of the plans. And um, to which also I knew that the um, if... If I proposed at the dinner, I'm pretty sure she would have killed me. Um, so <laughs> after I passed out, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to. Um, so I decided to propose on April 8th, the day before the dinner, and didn't still hadn't at that point told her the day, but get at some point narrowed it down to it be that weekend, um, which she was convinced it was going to be the Sunday after, not the Friday. 
and um, worked it out with Watauga Brewing, which, by the way, they were just absolutely amazing. Um, and so um, we coordinated everything. We were going to have the exact same table at the, at the rooftop and all that. The weather had other ideas because it snowed <laughs> that day, which is not when you want to be on a rooftop bar. Um so they moved us down into the dining area and they blocked off the entire corner just for us. Um, and at this point we had decided while well, I had sort of said like, Oh, it'd be really cool if we proposed to each other rather than on different days, which meant that she had to know what day uh, and where this was happening. So she could plan. I, that's kind of fair. Um, so yeah, we, um, so we, uh, told each other and we each individually made plans um with the manager at Rotaga Brewing and they well you had gotten lights that got strung up so there's pictures on social media that you can see this but these are these wonderful lights that kind of dangle down and kind of draped they were draped along the back wall um and you'd gotten um clips mm -hmm. and printed pictures of our our year so I walk in and there's this light, these glowing thing in the corner that's got our pictures of everything from our animals to things we've done together to us just goofing around to us doing absolutely nothing and just lounging on the couch in sweatpants to just our life. Um, and it's, it was just beautiful. Um, and she'd written me this really great letter. And um, so, yeah, I had put together a puzzle well, actually, I put together a video, which is what she saw first, mm -hmm. and um, of our year together, put it to song, and um, and then put together a puzzle with that. And I'd kept back the pieces that said, How, you know, um, marry me. So after she got the um, the puzzle together, I handed her those pieces and got down on one knee and proposed. And so, and then she got down on one knee and proposed to me. Um, but yeah. So thank you, everyone, for all the congratulations. You know, Amber, you ask a really fun question there. <laughs> um, it actually goes back to an ER trip that would happen 10 days into um, us being together. And um, so we had we'd spent our first weekend together. And I um, was trying to tough out a kidney stone, or what ended up being multiple. And... Um, so, cause you know, you don't want to tell somebody you just started dating, like, oh, I'm in so much pain. I think I need to see a doctor because you don't want to be that person. And I share that also because I was, I mean, in the really bad motorcycle accident and I had people tell me, I don't want to date anybody with medical issues. So I have that all in my head around that. And so in this, I'm going to tough it out. I'm like, I ask him like, let's go for a walk in the park. <laughs> And let's go to Willow Springs Park here in um, in Johnson City. It's actually my favorite park. It's got um, in, in the city and it's got the turtles in it, which, by the way, if you've never been to that park, never seen the turtles, go see the go see the turtles. And um, and so we get there and I think well, I should say driving there. I guess I'm gripping the steering wheel like I mean, gripping the steering wheel in pain. And um, and she looks at me and, and she's like, are you OK? I'm like, no, I'm fine, fine. <laughs> and um, and eventually, I guess I admit that I'm in you know, a little bit of pain. I'm all well, six out of ten in kind of pain, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this walk, and I'm I'm just like I'll go to the doctor tomorrow. It'll be fine. That's what I'm telling myself in my head. So we get the 10, 15 more minutes across town um, park, and it's now probably like somewhere around an eight out of ten. And I hobble from the parking lot that is close to where um, the pond is. And um, she looks at me and she's like, you're not okay. <laughs> and, um, and so I finally admit that I'm not. And I give her my keys. I'm like, you need to drive because I can't. And we need to go to the doctor. And um, I mean, part of the story, which re also relates to the campaign is I really didn't want to go to a valid facility because I didn't I mean, I didn't want the expense of it or any of that. So I had her drive me to um, the state of Franklin urgent care first. And um, so I and it's also um, I want to say we're just now getting vaccines and COVID. So I call and ask, like, are they open? And it's also a Sunday evening. 
and they, you know, tell me, and I guess to her, she hears me say like, oh yes, I'm in immense pain, which is, I guess the point that she realizes it's bad. And I stumble in there, um, which they immediately direct me across the street to Franklin Woods and go there. And I am clutching, let's just pretend that this is one of those heart rate monitors. I'm clutching <laughs> this in agony while they're getting my vital signs. Um, in between running to the restroom to be sick, because if you've never had a kidney stone, that's also part of the joy of it. So in that, she is with me through all of this, through all of this uh, medical, these medical issues. And, um, and I guess at some point I have texted my mom to say, oh, I'm at the ER, I think it's kidney stones. I sound much calmer in my text to my mom. And my mom comes to the hospital, which is how my mom and Kristen first met. <laughs> So it was a lovely story of like a well-planned out outing um, where, you know, it's all, uh, 10 days in that you always have your mom meet your girlfriend. I don't even know that we'd use the term girlfriend at that point. I don't think so. <laughs> yep. So, um, but anyway, like her just being there for me like that was just, that was the moment I knew. Um, but there's a question in the chat. When was the moment you knew? <laughs> um, I would say that it's like, a moment but um just so um in getting to know Kate I met a lot of her friends as well and seeing I don't know I think I've said this before but seeing how you all interact and how I don't know how much people love you and how much you love people um I sounds probably weird but it was really endearing <laughs> But not only that, just spending time with you, getting to know you, just kind of, I don't know. So it was a slow it, progression? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> 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 it was just one of those things that, you know, we, you know, it, I felt a light and just, mm -hmm. it just grew when, as, as we got to know each other. Oh, please. Can we tell the Taco Bell story? You can tell me. <laughs> So a thing that's important that um, there's sort of a standing, there's two, probably two standing jokes in the relationship is one, the a phrase uh, immense, because where she heard me say immense pain and where I finally fessed up to how much pain I was in. And the second um, is that drive throughs hold a, like drive through um, lines hold a sig place of significance for us. <laughs> <laughs> so the first part was actually in a cookout drive through um, and it's where she asked me to be her girlfriend. And I think it was like a week after the hospital visit. Uh -huh. um, and so she gets up the courage and asks me right as the person goes, may I take your order? <laughs> it was very. Uh, <laughs> so fast forward a couple of uh, weeks. <laughs> no, well, couple, no, maybe like a month, <laughs> maybe a month to six weeks. And we're headed home from a fun night out in Johnson City, which there's some folks here on the chat. So like Becky, I know was, um, um, who's here. Yeah, there we are. Um, but so Becky, we have been out with Becky and some other folks and we stopped at the Taco Bell drive through line. And, um, and so, um, so we're in there. And so she goes, Oh, I have something I want to tell you, but I don't know if I want to tell you. And I'm like, well, it's a drive through. This is the place to tell me. <laughs> So she, so she tells me as we pull up to the window and she goes, I'm going to marry you one day. <laughs> and it was like, can I take your order? It was kind of the same thing. <laughs> and so um, I've sort of joked that we'll get married in a drive through which isn't happening, but it would be kind of fitting. It would uh, fit, but no. It would fit. <laughs> but yeah, she told me um, in a Taco Bell drive through line that the first time that, that sh she was going to marry me. So, um, so yes. Um, but no, I mean, like, and I appreciate literally all the love that's coming through the chat because that, I mean, first of all, that's just so heartwarming and I appreciate that so much. Um, that's true, Chris. Vegas does have drive through uh, weddings, um, but um, that's probably a little more expensive than what we're doing here in the backyard. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're, um, you know, we, and I want to say this matters because like, we think that our story is so much like so many of your all stories in the chat and it's all of these stories matter. And it's, 
want to say it's angering and heart wrenching just that everything is just so under attack. And so we, um, like I said, this is why we wanted to get on here and tell this story because we should be able to fall in love. We should be able to say, you know, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I want to do that. And then what, you know, when we decide it's right, whatever drive through that is, get down <laughs> on one knee and propose and, you know, and have the wedding and, you know, do, you know, have that celebration with friends and family, have that memory. And, um, and then, you know, whatever, if we have a family, if we have kids, um, you know, that know that we're protected, know that whatever we do, like we are recognized the same as everyone else. And, and so we feel like, and I get in the, I'm going to say, I, I, I don't know another way to put this. The climate makes this a terrible analogy. So please forgive this, but it feels like there's a target on our future's back um, that the, that Rusty Crow and the Tennessee GOP and quite frankly, the courts and the GOP at large are coming after our futures. They're trying to put them, you know, just make it so that it's not possible. And I, you know, we all fought for so long to, to get this. Um, you know, I had a friend earlier today, you know, comment around, um, you know, that, oh, you know, because we were talking about like, still wanting to do the ceremony in a year and a half about how, you know, oh, it's just, you know, it's a big celebration. Maybe, you know, it's just not quite worth it and all that stuff. And my comment, and, and it was a completely well-intended comment. So I, this isn't me trying to call it out, but I said that, oh, I like that, Rachel, carry the Taco Bell packet bouquet. <laughs> um, that we, what do I want to say? that I want to have that because this is like being able to do that and share that in a way that is planned out in the way that we wanted it. That's not done in protection. That's not done in protest. That's not done um, that, that you have the time to, to celebrate all the things that generally go into planning a wedding that that's what we fought for. And now it feels like it's sort of being ripped from us. Um, I had a coworker, I don't remember if it was yesterday or today, asked me if I was excited to get married in like the next two weeks. And I said, you know, I'm incredibly excited to get married. I feel like though there's another side of that, like a flip side of that, that we're not getting an engagement period. Um, and it really, really hit me when, because you listen to the office ladies podcast, by the way, we're office fans, huge office fans. Um, and so there was a comment where um, one of the actresses was talking about the one who plays Pam was saying that, oh, yeah, this was the episode where Jim and Pam get, you know, are have their Valentine's Day as a newly engaged couple. And it hit me. We're not going to have that. Um, and so we're not going to have all those things that people who get engaged that. Um, I mean, and granted, some people choose to get married faster. And like, if you choose to, like, that's not me knocking it. But I say, like, it shouldn't be something you do out of defense. Like, you shouldn't feel like you have to. Um, but um, I'm sorry, Chris, that that's happening to you all, too. Um, and you're right, Latoya, there. Love never fails. Um, and so I know that this community, like, just as you all are showing up tonight and will continue to show up, that you're going to show up for each and every one of us that are facing this. Um, and so, like I said, this is why we wanted to tell this story. Um, I mean, obviously we want to let you in on the joy that's happening between us. And, um, but that's, that's kind of where we're at. And so, you know, I, I mean, I'd be sort of remiss to not make a slight campaign plug. Um, but in that, um, you know, I'm running for office to kind of, to combat legislation that's coming out that are attacks against the LGBTQ community to protect marriage among the many things that affect us um, to ensure that um, trans kids can play sports in schools to ensure that um, no matter how you identify that you can use the bathroom that you identify with, that, um, that you can change your birth certificate, that you can adopt, that 
all of these things that matter that you're able to do that. You're not going to get fired because of how you dress, how you look, who you love, any of that stuff. So I'm going to plug plug my campaign here. Um, feel free to keep celebrating or, you know, if you're feeling generous. Um, but, you know, we need more people in Nashville. We need more people at all levels of government. Um, so please either run for office, support the candidates, get out and volunteer. Please, 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 please go do that. Um, but this is why I'm running. Um, all of this is very personal. And, you know, I got in this race because of healthcare um, and access to it and affordability and having choice in healthcare. And because my motorcycle accident made it so that, you know, I'm, you know, that's, I've navigated this healthcare system. Um, I still have had surgeries going from my motorcycle accident. This is an ongoing thing. So that's what got me in the race. Roe v. Wade. I, I actually had not planned on leading with the fact that I'm gay, knowing where I am. Um, I wanted people to get to know me. I also recognize that when I enter a room, there's a big rainbow flag over my head because of how I present, how I look, and I'm very comfortable in how I present and how I look. And I'm not going to change. I'm going to continue being my authentic self. Um, but when this happened and knowing that this is attacking our community, there was no way I couldn't I couldn't stay silent about it. I couldn't let that happen and take it on the chin. Um, I couldn't, you know, happen, let that happen to my friends, neighbors to, I mean, just none of like, that's just not right. So it's very much part of my platform. It always was a part of my platform, but I'm leading with it. Um, it's one of the top issues. Now this right to privacy, this right to exist, the right to be who you are, the right to have a life and not have the government come in on and step on it, the right to government, the right to have that and not have the government come in and delegitimize who you are, who you, um, who you love um, to just, I mean, how you look like none of it. And so it's something that sort of baffled me around the don't tread on me stuff that um, literally what I'm saying is, okay, literally don't tread on me. Don't tread on your friends and neighbors. Just live your life. I'll live mine. And we'll stay and, you know, we'll work to continue supporting each other and we'll build the road that helps you get to your job and me get to my job. And we'll continue doing that because that's what a community does. But I'm not going to do anything that prevents you from having your life and you're not going to do anything that prevents me from having mine. So that's, um, I think that's what we need, where we need to be and that all of that is under attack. Um, so I'm happy, to, like, we're both happy to answer questions, continue telling stories, because I know that um, clearly you all are enjoying that. Um, and like I said, thank you so much for all of the love and support that you're giving us. Um, you're right, um, Latoya, the, you know, walking in your authenticity. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll share this other story, because you, you know, put in there, if nothing else, it gives courage to every queer person who has questioned their legitimacy, like, uh, I'll put that actually put that in here see if that there you go um it's so i came out in 2006 and at some point i don't know around 2000 between 2006 2008 um my grandfather found out i was gay i think my mom told him and that i had sent a picture of me and my then girlfriend for christmas and my grandfather was there at christmas and asked who was in the picture with me and at first his response was oh no that's fine i like ellen and, and so I was like, okay, my grandfather's cool. Like whatever, um, that I was on the, um, steps of the Supreme court, um, when, um, marriage equality was being argued the day it was being argued. And that was really cool. My grandfather found out and he was like, oh, you know, tell her I'm very proud of her. And so I was like, wow, I have a really accepting grandfather. Like a lot of people don't have that, don't have accepting families in so many ways. And I felt so incredibly lucky. Um, and then my grandfather came out. Um, he was 88 when he came out. And at um, within about a year or two, we got to talk about it. And he told me that one of the reasons he felt safe and or felt able to come out was because I had and so, um, and in 2018, he married um, the man he was with. They got married actually on election day in 2018 um, in a ceremony in Florida. They lived in Florida and he passed away at 92. 
Um, but that was just really important that he finally got to live his truth. Um, they were actually in shorts and Hawaiian t-shirt or Hawaiian button downs. Um, and they went to the courthouse and got married. They just decided to go that day. And so, um, so I, there is a lot of truth in being your authentic self, no matter who you are and, and what that means, because you don't know who's seeing you. Um, so you doing that just absolutely positively impacts somebody else. And so, and you might not ever have any idea um, that they're going to carry that story with you, whether they needed a strong role model, whether they needed um, somebody to say that, hey, it's okay to be gay, or maybe it, you know, I needed to see a strong female, or maybe I needed to, like, whoever that is that they're needing to see because they don't see that representation, because they don't know where they fit in this world, that you stepping up and being authentically you is that for that person. Um, so please, please, please always be authentically you. Um, so yeah. Um, and I agree. Like, I, I love that story about my grandfather that he was finally able to be authentically himself. Um, cause our understanding, we got some stories after he passed away that, um, he had known for a long time and that my grandmother knew, and I guess they had, we don't know this part, but we sort of assume that they had some kind of agreement. And I also sort of assumed that my grandmother knew um, because, I mean, like, I've always was a tomboy, you know, and that I didn't come out till I was 26. So I didn't know that in fifth grade that I was shopping in the boys department might have meant something. Um, but my grandmother will like with no questions asked took me. Um, I mean, she made sure that if I got a tank top, you couldn't see through it. But that was kind of like that was her limit, not any not where I shopped, but just making sure that you know, had clothes that fit me. And um, so there's a lot of ways that I think that my grandmother, I mean, she passed away before I came out, but I think she would have accepted me too. Um, and, you know, people don't have that. I mean, my father, my biological father does not accept me for who I am and sees this as a difference of opinion. I don't, I mean, I hope it's okay to share that. I mean, your family's not no. very accepting. And so, and I realize that's a complete understatement, but um, I know you've got chosen family here mm -hmm. that loves you and embraces you, as well as everyone here that is on the chat and expressing love. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, you know, oh, deep breath, but it's, you know, we wanted to share this story. I know I keep saying that, but it matters because this is, you know, this is who, who we are. This is the community we're wanting. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the mm -hmm. things that, you know, Becky saying that we're a family, all that representation absolutely does matter more than people think. Um, and so, um, and we love you all and appreciate this so much. Um, so yeah, that's, so if you do anything, please, please, please. I mean, obviously support my campaign. I'm going to make that plug, but there, it is political in the sense that these decisions are being made in, in legislative bodies at local, state, and federal level. Please donate, please volunteer for campaigns, make sure everyone you know is registered to vote, go vote, drive people to the polls share information, tell people why this matters. And I get that it's scary. Like, especially if you're from a marginalized community going to have these conversations. Um, I know that there are places that don't always feel safe. Um, I, um, I'll i share that in 2020, somebody sent me a death threat for, um, what do I say, standing up for, or speaking out in regards to the violence that um, and the murder of George Floyd this this happens um and so i understand that there is danger and it's important to protect ourselves um i also know that if we don't have these hardcore conversations if we don't keep showing up and if we don't continue to be authentic change doesn't happen so this is a pivotal moment too much is happening in our courts that we've allowed the republican party to just appoint anybody 
um, up and down, like just at the federal bench, state bench, um, that even just saying the courts will overturn it, we don't have that guarantee. Just look at what happened to Roe v. Wade. Um, so every everything's at stake here. Our democracy is at stake. Our ability to have a right to privacy, our ability to live and love and be safe and have a community is at stake. So if I leave you with no other message, get involved. Um, I, I'm so happy that we got to share our story with you all. Um, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for your ongoing support. Thank you for your love. Um, but so please, 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 this is my call to action. Take this feeling, take this moment, and now go do something. Find something, commit yourself to it. So between now and November 8th, go make a difference. So thank you for joining us. And we will see you all on social media lives here soon and look to see you out in the bright, sunny real world, at, you know, soon as well. So thank you and good night. Yes. And happy pride. Happy pride.